And we are not going to move an inch from our cradle land in Loliondo, in Simanjiro. They banned of all our houses, including their school uniforms, their school books. So I missed their school several times until I asked myself what is happening. And we are ready, and we are more than energized, and we are moving forward because our God hasn't told us to stop. I think their resilience is incredibly inspiring, uh, considering that they're the ones on the front line uh, doing this, and we really only just coming in to offer support. It is labelled as the longest heated pipeline in the world. The East Africa Crude Oil Pipeline, a 1,443-kilometer pipeline that is primed to transport oil from the Hoima fields in Uganda to the Tanzanian coastal city of Tanga. Thank you for responding to my invitation to join us and, and the Tatar Company of France and the Sinop Company of China to sign the agreement of the East African pipeline from Hoima to Tanga. I'm quite conversant that prior to the implementation of this project, there are still pending issues that need to be addressed. And in this regard, I urge all parties to work together to address the remaining issues to ensure the expedient start of this project. Residents in Tanzania and Uganda were promised that the oil pipeline would bring with it a social and economic transformation. <laughs> yale mafuta yanayozalishwa Uganda hayawafaidishi wa, watu wa Uganda yatachukuliwa yanasafirishwa kupitia Tanzania yanaenda 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 kwenye nchi zingine huko China yanaenda Ufaransa na mwishoni yanafanywa yana, 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 yana ya yanafanywa yanasafishwa ndipo tunaletewa sisi na tunauziwa kwa kwa bei ya juu zaidi we've seen so much destruction especially uh, the national park where the infrastructure for the ECOP is passing through and then remember these communities entirely depend on land so our homestead without land it's really a gone one. In Uganda all these remain pipe dreams unreachable to residents of Hoima, Bulisa and the greater massacre regions. Oil spills, pollution, corruption, and other negative effects on the broader ecosystem, all dangers communities face. What about the displacement? What are you saying now? What Land and environmental rights defenders have raised concerns about the possible environmental and social impacts of the pipeline. Yeah, that is actually that is my former village, and the, the house you're seeing in blue, uh, that was my primary school. That's where I went through my primary school. Christopher Opio's village in Kabale is among those through which the pipeline passes. The construction of the pipeline has displaced 7,000 people in his region. He had to start a movement so as to defend his village. The journey, oh my God, it wasn't easy. 
Now what happened in 2012 when we started this movement, it was a pressure group, we used to call it pressure group, and even government were calling us, you know, pressure group. So in 2012, when we started our, our movement, to fight for our own rights, now it was a big challenge. The government is preventing residents from utilizing their property without compensating them. Schools have shut down, leaving the students in uncertainty. So you can imagine from 2012, a child that was in primary five uh, to up to 2018 would be in a secondary school. All these children dropped out of school. By the time they came back here, they were already grown up, you know, young girls and, and boys. Just like Christopher Opio, Robert Birimuye, a farmer in Chotera, Greater Massacre Region, continues to be the voice of more than 2,000 people who have placed their trust on him. Imagine somebody comes and tells you that this land I'm going to give you, let's assume 50,000. But you've not talked to him to know you how much do you want. It is them who raised the price. For us, we just received the rap forms that he, your land is going to be weighed under this. Robert took the war to the law-making bodies in his country petitioning both parliament and the courts on behalf of those affected by the project in his community. Many people fear, but it is you to decide. But many people fear you should have the heart which is hard as a stone. Because for me I signed already the letter of death. Robert is not alone in his quest to free the people. There are others, like Kayinga Mudu Yisto, who leads a community network focused on human rights protection, land ownership, oil and gas management. We said, what happened in Bunyoro will not happen in Gweta Masaka. It's the reason why I became tight in Gweta Masaka. I told them, under my dead body, as a son of Gweta Masaka, we have learned what has happened in Bunyoro. We have learned what I, I benchmarked in Nigeria, I benchmarked in Turkana in Kenya. I said, what we have come to learn about oil extractives in Africa, they are not, the same. they don't have any difference. It is just the same. Mafiarism, impunity, marginalization of the communities. Although the push to stand for their rights has come at a cost, the defenders are not backing down. My office was raided in my home. But why? I, I insisted that no rights of people in Gweta Masaka should be manipulated. Then it came to play, uh, black mail, getting threatening phone calls, surveillance around my home and my office. Land and environmental defender Maxwell Atuhura fled his home because of continued arrests and harassment after petitioning the government on behalf of the Bulisa community. I've been arrested and spent some days in cells because of this work. I was arrested in 20, 2021, in May, and, um, and spent two, night, two nights in cells. I was charged for an unlawful Assembly. Bulisa is central to the East Africa crude oil pipeline. It is a district where most of the oil is located. Over 27% of the population in this region has been affected. The pipeline could lead to the loss of natural habitat and biodiversity and significantly alter migration patterns 
of wild animals. Uh, Frying of the gas, you know, testing of the oil. It came with burning the oil, you know, the heat was too much to people and um, it, it changed the, 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 the area in one way the other. Now they have gone they, from that stage, they had to go on another stage of uh, acquiring land in sensitive areas. You know, this area is one of uh, areas which are rich in biodiversity. So um, uh, there are many biodiversity which are tempered with. You find that uh, some oil wells are even in the middle of Machison Falls National Park. Alice Kazimura an environmental defender in Bulisa vows to push on. Initially in Bulisa, we are not having land conflict, but now we have a lot of land conflict. If you have got to go to any court, most of the cases are on land conflict. Because for us, your land was owned communally. Hmm? You could come, you say, hey, but I want to construct my house. They said, you construct, there's no problem. We, we are not having boundaries. But now, it is so tight with the oil, everybody must have a boundary. So we are having that problem of land and women. Women have faced this stuff because men are selling land without mercy. And sometimes other men, when they sell, they just move and leave you there with their children. And remain to suffer. This petition is direct. For them to be heard, defenders have been forced to amplify their voices. For those people who can, who can have a voice for others, they should speak for others because you have many, many people who cannot talk for themselves. They, should, they have issues which are pressing them, but they cannot speak for themselves. So people, can, people should come out and speak for others. People should come out and make voices for others, be the voices of the voiceless. What we're doing now, we have seen that the company may not do what we, what we want. We want total justice. We, we know we may not have justice in Uganda. We need to look for justice from elsewhere. Amplify them across borders to the ears of those who make decisions on behalf of their oppressive regimes. My activ activism started because of what I was going through, what my family was going through, and what my community was going through. Speaking on a um, woman perspective, every time I look at a kid suffering, I also think about my kids at home. I'm like, what if this also happens to me one day? Because there are situations and conditions that no human being would really want to go through or to face. So when you really visit those communities and you listen to them and you look at them, it really gives you more courage that I will fight and fight for them and on their behalf and with them so that at least the livelihoods are improved. I'm born to do what I'm doing. And I, I would tell people, no one can stop me to, to do what I'm doing. It is only God. Even if they are money, even if the companies are very, they are a lot of money, they are intimidation, talk about your guns, what have you. Nothing will drain me from fighting and defending the rights of the communities affected by ECOP. They can only hope that someone out there listens that someone out there acts to turn their strength into hope, not just for them, but for defenders in neighboring countries. In Kenya, just like neighboring country Uganda, defenders are steadfast in their determination to not be silenced. The once peaceful atmosphere of this region is now being disrupted as they stand firm in their convictions. The Emberboot Forest in Kenya's Rift Valley is one of the largest uninterrupted blocks of indigenous forest remaining in East Africa. In 2009, the Kenyan government declared that deforestation had endangered the viability of the water catchment within the forest and that all residents had to be resettled. This meant that 
the Senguer, an indigenous community who had called this part of the world home for more than a century, had to find alternative homes. It looks like a forest, but it's not forested to us. It is a land that is forested to Senguer community. That is what it means to Senguer community. The right of the Senguer to their land in Embabut is protected by the Constitution of Kenya, which defines ancestral land and lands traditionally occupied by hunter-gatherer communities as community lands. Government ordered evictions of these communities continue to separate them from their spiritual and cultural practices in the forest and putting their very culture at the risk of disappearing forever. The Kenya Forest Service, a statutory body mandated to conserve and manage all forests in Kenya, has been carrying out forced evictions in Embabut since 1980s, burning houses, displacing hundreds, injuring many, and even killing. I asked one of my grandfather, why are they burning us and the houses in the other side are not burned? So they are telling me that government has said that our forest, our home has forest. And we were forest dwellers since time immemorial. Elias Kimayo, who identifies as a Senguer, has been on the front line responding to the forceful evictions and accompanying human rights violations. First, when we were affected in 2014, all these forests was covered up by KFS. They could not allow where you passed by. So there were roadblocks not to allow people like you or any media houses or any CSOs people to come and see the challenges that the community are going through. So what they did was like they, they closed the old forest and they come now to burn people's houses arrest people, take price from people, steal people's cow, uh, sheep or goats. Then I was left wondering how can the world know about these atrocities that my community is going through. On the 2nd of April 2017, Elias was filming Kenya Forest Service Rangers from a distance as they burnt houses in Emberwood Forest. I almost also lost my life because of that work. Because when they came and discovered I was there, one was filming them, burning houses. So they tracked me down inside their forest. So and they ambushed me in 2017. So they almost killed me, but I, I survived. Because I survived also. So I continued because if I had died then, that could be the end of everything. Because God gave me a chance to, because they need that their community needs me to still do this work in order to, so that they get their rights. In January 2014, or this year, your lordship, the respondents descended on Emberwood Forest and evicted members of the Senguel community, destroyed their property through burning and even used force. Government officials claimed that the Senguel were consulted fully through the Emberwood Forest Task Force process and that they consented to the eviction. First of all, eviction. There's no proof that they, have been, that they were evicted. Because if you, read, if you read the affidavits, they are stating that they ran away themselves. Between December of 2017 and April of 2018, community representatives reported that armed Kenya forest rangers burnt down an estimated 341 houses. Now, the community lives in constant fear. Fear that has now turned to strength. So I encouraged the women to speak because they were like, if I speak, they will point me. Or if there were journalists to come, they will see me on the TV. So if they see me on the TV, they will come and maybe talk at us. So I started encouraging them and then we composed some songs and then go to court. Strength 
that comes from the African Environmental Defenders Initiative, a movement dedicated to elevating the work of environmental defenders and ensuring their human rights are protected. The initiative works to minimize the risks faced by defenders by offering support to enhance their resilience. Fueling this effort, Natural Justice has created the African Environmental Defenders Fund through the initiative adding even more muscle to this cause. The self-assurance of someone having thought about your work as a defender from wherever you are and so you're doing your work knowing that if anything bad happens there is a fund that I can apply to. So that psychological supportive I may call it I think that that is very important. You've got different situations where either the defender um, needs to leave a particular area yeah for safety reasons you know and that needs to happen now. There are times where defenders are often imprisoned, you know, and they need lawyers and quick responses. And that was a big thing for us, you know, to be able to provide support for this as well. Natural justice capacity can't, you know, we, we can't respond to everything. So the idea is to work with other lawyers as well and ensure there are funds to support their efforts as much as possible. The Sanguer people have remained steadfast in the pursuit of their land and human rights over time. They remain hopeful that the government will do right by the community. Hata serikali wakebanya nini hatu tachoka. Hata wakemalisa sisi wenye tuko, wengine watakuja. Na watafuata tu yu mtinto. Tumeamua na tumeamua kwa kaulimoja ya kwamba. Tusiwache ariti yetu ya babu na kuenda kuishi ya wengine tukue watumwa. In parts of Tanzania, forceful evictions have become an unnecessary evil. The evictions come with intimidation, threats and arrests. Kwa hiyo, kama tunataka ngorongoro ibakie na inauza Tanzania, tuwe serious kuimaintain na kuhakikisha ngorongoro inabakie kwenye status yaki. Kuhamisha watu sijui mtafanyaji. This is a story of suppression. Hakuna askari aliyekwenda huko kijijini kwenda kutishia kwa namna yote ile kwa sababu kwa mipango yote hakuna kijiji kinaondolewa, hakuna mwananchi anaondoka, hakuna tatizo lolote la mifugo. The Serengeti National Park in Tanzania is a haven of untouched beauty drawing thousands of admirers every year to witness the grand wildebeest migration. But behind the stunning scenery lies a hidden story. The park's success has caught the eye of the government, eager to expand its reach within this protected area. In the village of Loliondo, the government has announced plans to carve out a piece of the community's land for a hunting lodge. They want to evict us from that land because of three reasons. One is because of it is a disposal area for wildlife. Second, it is a, a migratory route for wildlife. Thirdly, it is, a, it is where a source of water uh, which, which feed uh, Serengeti National Park come from. But to us, that is not enough reason. In 1992, the Tanzanian government leased community land to a company from the United Arab Emirates whose intention was to convert community land in Loliondo to a game lodge for trophy hunting, greenwashed under the premise of conservation efforts. We had 
in a, a, a continuous conflict since 92 up to now. We had a continuous conflict about that land because the land is ours as villagers. We have titles and the land is ours in general. Since we were moved from Serengeti by colonial government to Loliondo, and we were promised by the colonial government that we will, we will continue to use that land without uh, any, any, any conflict or anybody to intervene or interrupt us again. On 7th June 2022, a paramilitary group estimated to be around 700 people, mostly police, park rangers, military and other security forces, arrived in the Loliondo area of Ngorongoro, Tanzania. Amateur footage recorded by one of the residents shows how violent the crackdown was, including the shooting and arresting of those protesting against the installation of beacons to hive off part of their village and make it hunting grounds. I am an innocent person and even my people are innocent but we have been harassed because of, of we, you know, it is like a surprise to us. Now, long-time leaders have been forced to flee as a result of their opposition to the forced evictions. Traditional uh, leaders, community, political leaders, we are faced a lot of um, intimidation. Others are taken to, 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 to jail. For instance, we have uh, uh, 24 people now in jail. They are charged uh, with murder case, which is still going on. So there's a lot of intimidation that has been going on. And actually, uh, they were also um, attacking civil society organizations, the NGO, uh, and the, the, the individual, like myself and the others. Edward Porokwa has been an environmental defender since his years at the University of Dar es Salaam in Tanzania. On a specific case of Ngorongoro, I've been involved for almost 20 years now trying to support the community to uh, raise their voice, linking them with uh, media, linking them with international mechanisms, trying to develop uh, different uh, positions and analysis of the rights of the people uh, to land and natural resources. After years advocating for communal land rights in Tanzania, he too has found himself a refugee because of the Loliondo land matter. Like now, I've been out of my community. I've been away from my family for more than two months, worrying that I will be joined in a very serious uh, criminal case, which I have not com uh, committed. I have not even been there when it was committed. But you are worried that the government is doing all the means uh, to silence the people. On the 9th of June 2022, more than 10 Maasai leaders were arrested and more than 30 men and women were wounded during violent clashes. So you can find now people being uh, charged with murder case that took place when they were at the hand of the police. If you don't speak, if you don't talk, the violation will continue to happen. So we will have to continue talking, continue raising our voices to a different level, not just out of the uh, country, but even the country. We want to see how do we change the attitude of the people, the policy makers. On September 21st, 2017, the Maasai community had lodged a case at the East African Court of Justice seeking a declaration that the Tanzanian government had broken the law. However, on September 30th, 2022, the Maasai people were disappointed as the regional court ruled in favor of the Tanzanian government and declared the decision to reserve land for wildlife preservation as lawful. 
whichever side of the coin you look at it, I think in itself that is not the end of the fight. Um, I think the biggest challenge we have and something we are strongly advocating for and I think something that we need to continue talking and pushing is having national legislation, having policies at national level that recognize and protect land and environmental defenders. The defenders of Loliondo have not given up on a peaceful resolution of the matter. My government is an elected government and it was elected by the people of Tanzania, including the people of Loliondo, including the people of my world, that to, to be, uh, to, to have mercy to people. Because if people uh, suffer because of their government, the government they have elected, it will be really very bad. So I amply ask the government to listen people, to listen as, as the leaders of the people. And finally, we can have a concrete solution on this problem. Local community have a, they know their rights. And once you know the, your, your rights, you, not, you never stop until you see uh, you, 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 you bring the change that you want. Thousands of kilometers away is the island nation of Madagascar, famed for its unique biodiversity, abundant natural resources, pristine beaches, and unblemished vanilla. In contrast, danger is never far away from the defenders and their families. 70-year-old Henry Rakotoa Arizoa, a community leader and a champion for the protection of an endangered rainforest in Madagascar, is one face among other land and environmental defenders. Henry dedicated his life to the protection of Madagascar's forest as a community leader and lately as the president of the locally based community association Mialo, which protects the Ankazondandi forest outside of Moramanga city. On multiple occasions, he confronted and reported on illegal loggers in this area. On the 2nd of June, 2022, protecting the forest cost Henry his life. He was killed inside the forest he has been trying to protect from illegal logging by traffickers for several years. As the son continues to grieve for his father, a wife's sorrow refuses to go away, lingering on, reminding her every day of the loss brought about by Henry's death. Jina lu tsumba yita kutena na mitsu fa yita tena banga mitsu na tuka tranku miana kisai za murai tranu si za tel miana kisai murai tran tau de ini za lasa te miana kasana kufar lasa si za fa de ki zombu ane tuka tran tau te ti zan za na kulama tu fa ne tuka tran ku fa yu zan bo piara kam na mandi ende fa te ne ita kue banga mitsu tuka tran ne mena ke in Madagascar standing for the truth may expose the defenders to harms with irreversible consequences. Tumiatsati yi zanu la manu pwa marina zan, zan nea zavata tena ti tende fera mi zan, ni aram feru vana ni wali wa, 
tena nena zany raha misy mety ataon'ny olona dia tena tebany mihitsy dia tsy mahazaka ny tenen'io le olona hoe izy ma meva olana le olona loa loa ny tsy avolo olona fa le olona zany misesika amin'ny manono fona The threat of death has however not kept environmental defenders in Madagascar away from their calling Edmond Koto knows the importance of mangroves for his village and his environment over life. He knows the protection that the mangrove offers against the harsh waves of the sea. Unfortunately for him, one day in December of 2021, the mangroves were also the location of a near-death experience for him. Tenen, in Chabu Zetenen, in Chabu Teneni, Nandetanyam Deze Talatan of Murzana Kung Talatan. The Nandetan, a fanavium raising ru on Panafkis in Navito, Linda, Missy, Changan of Dimlai Run and then an Afkis to me, Amia la Fadito, and Totolin. A fanav zing rosy, Chitane room pitcher pitcham Zana Kung Quabito. Rafana two zazing in fifty rain room raising, Nede for Namok for the fuzzing in Narata choosing, Zingam Dera Namongozito for Chamalun it, Untotolian. Nanarunia no room would need a full dinner more as a Naro in Radina room too. Rokafanagan Karaiza for Changan is an acrom sabu, a trocanali, a Markaraz and Famak and Tangandu. Ruka fana kanu kara ida fana changa zani pudi bo directing ya zandra na aku mbe ruka fana abi ruka boka taringi ya zandra na aku tafipi kwa mbe boka zindi ala zani siski angutka zana kuhuto. Edmund was rushed to hospital after a significant loss of blood. It was a miracle that he survived. Anta fia nroja todo ngo ala nroja zimi mukulukulura tutuli ena ni. Arzezin chi am fiko kulunga zizi ze mi ezka fujinga mi fiko kulunga tutuliang. The African Environmental Defenders Fund, an emergency fund that is given to defenders who have faced threats and harassment due to their work as environmental defenders, has gone a long way to help him recover. Lewi ra amna kafu chesit kunvan lewi le sakafu zing jaliyo. Zana kuzi mi anta mandeli ko, zana ko aru. Sakafu mde zing tenga jaliyo ko ngatin zing yamde. Votir kai rum chukur kila mi fanga pinga fita angari anga mezan ruhi likaza amziyo. Defenders in Madagascar go through different challenges in their work. Those people who protect the, the biodiversity, the forest, they are exposed to uh, abuses from different parts of, uh, of those people who have connection with the authorities, with the traffickers, with uh, everything. It is not just the mangroves that environmental defenders are protecting in Madagascar. Even their village and territory of life is at risk. Aba Victoru Angarako Zau Terkato Zamanzari Usibi. In 2016, a government directive was issued and required Victor and his neighbors to vacate their village. This was meant to pave way for a private investor who had secured a 50-year lease for the land. Can I phone you? This procedure is not going to be able to do it. It's a reconnaissance, 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 it's a it's for the period that the village has existed, Victor says the villagers have done all they can 
to keep the environment safe. Ar tegna mampalahy loko fa le toerana dia tektara io fatry pont de torti io misy le torti de mer miakatra magnatody. Matoa atramzay atramzay torti tsy mela io magnatody zay fokon'olo tsy mangilingiling torti fa yorovanezy ny torti magnatody fina tody mivery mandendran'ny masy. They have faced death. They have been beaten and threatened. But the defenders in this island nation are not giving up any time soon. The number of troops is only a year away from the Tuli Nani. Is only the map of the Tuli Nani. Is only the number 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 of the Tuli Nani. Satria izany vata tsy mety izany dia fahita hoe fambana resaka ingetsy hoe ho anana ho andranana ihany fa era zo tolo zo potika rehefa hoe misy zavatra simba raha e Every day African environmental defenders face death beatings threats and harassment from their governments The importance of partnerships uh, in this context is that it it ensures that we reach a wider scope of defenders, especially those defenders who, whose voices are often not heard and who often never have access to these kinds of resources. We are able to support defenders who are, who are playing this incredible role, um, you know, not just for their communities, uh, I would say for the continent and the globe. For many of them, Protecting the environment means putting their lives on the line. It means staring death and harassment in the face and emerging victorious. <laughs>